uh, welcome back to this next video and this is the uh, part two on the neuronal or the uh, synaptic signaling uh, in the last video i've told you about the uh, endocrine the paracrine the neuronal and the contact dependent uh, signaling which are actually the major types of the cell signaling uh, then i've told you that neuronal signaling is a unique uh, example of the paracrine signaling in which the presynaptic neuron uh, that actually fires an electrical impulse which move down the axon and when the uh, electrical impulse that reaches the axon terminal the neurotransmitter they are released into the uh, synaptic cleft where the neurotransmitter that actually interact with the receptor of the postsynaptic neuron thereby causing a chemical change in the postsynaptic neuron by opening the ion channel and changing the electrical potential across the uh, cell membrane uh, then we uh, discussed about the structure of the neuron and I've told you that uh, the uh, neuron are actually the building blocks of the brain and the central nervous system and there are actually two types of the cell in the uh, nervous system. One they are known as the neuron which are responsible for transmitting the chemical and the electrical signaling and the other type of the cell they were known as the glial cells which were non-neuronal cells which are providing the uh, structure and support to the uh, nervous system. Then I told you that neurons they are very much similar to the other cells of the body because they have got the cell membrane, they have got the nucleus and genes, they got the cytoplasm, mitochondria, but they have got special features. And then we had a detailed discussion on the structure of the neuron. And I've told you that one of the uh, extension, that one of the important part of the neuron that is known as the cell body, which contains the nucleus and other organelles, one of the extensions from the cell body, they were known as the dendrites, which were actually receiving the message and transferring them to the cell body. Uh, another important extension from the cell body was the axon, which was actually taking um, the message away from the cell body the exon that were actually uh, sheeted with uh, myelin which was uh, the myelin sheet which was a fatty substance which was produced by the glial cells uh, by the schwann or the oligodendrocyte cells and the uh, axons uh, when you talk about this myelin sheet there was gap in the myelin sheet which was called is the node of the run wheel and the, the uh, terminals of the axons they were known as the axon terminals uh, which were having the uh, neurotransmitter which were released into the synaptic cleft when they receive a message now in this particular video uh, i want to focus on the types of the neurons now there are three primary types of the neuron the first type of the neuron they are known as the sensory neurons and these sensory neurons they are actually responsible for converting the external stimuli or they are responsible for converting the external signal like the heat and sound from the environment into the corresponding internal stimuli which is actually the uh, electrical stimuli uh, and and then this electrical stimuli that will be converted into the chemical form or that will remain in the electrical form we will discuss that but in the uh, sensory neuron and the sensory neuron are actually responsible for converting the uh, external stimuli from the environment into corresponding internal stimuli the second type of the uh, neuron they are called is the motor neurons and these motor neurons they are actually located in the uh, central nervous system. They project their axon outside of the central nervous system to directly or indirectly control muscles. So the motor neuron they will be actually responsible for directly or indirectly controlling the uh, movements of the muscles. Then the third type of the neuron they are called is the interneurons. And these interneurons that actually act as the middleman between the sensory and the motor neuron. Now, this image that will uh, clear the concept of the three types of the neuron. Now, when you talk about these sensory neurons, uh, as I've told you in the last video, that they have got these dendrites, and these dendrites uh, they are actually going to receive the message from the environment. And uh, there are sensory receptors in these uh, dendrites, uh, for example, sensory receptors in the skin, the eyes, nose, tongues, ears, throughout your body, there will be sensory receptors and they will be sensing like the visible light, the sound, the heat, the physical contact, etc. Or they will be sensing the chemical signals like the smell and the taste. So these sensory neurons, they are actually sensing the environment. 
So when these sensory neurons, they sense the environment, what they do is that the signal that will start, that will start moving from these dendroids into the cell body and then into the axon. So when that moves into the axon, this is the movement of the uh, direction of the conduction. So the uh, message will start traveling from here in the sensory neurons. They, that will be transferred into the uh, interneuron as you can see over here the uh, the exon terminals they are going to uh, interact with the cell body of the uh, interneuron the not the cell body the dendrites of the uh, interneuron so the sensory neuron that will be interacting with the uh, interneuron now this interneuron in turn is going to interact with the uh, motor neuron over here the uh, axons of the interneuron they are actually going to interact with the dendrites of the uh, motor neuron so uh, when the motor neuron they get the message these motor neuron will be responsible for the contraction or the relaxation of the muscle so this is how the things they are going to move the sensory neuron is going to uh, receive the message that will be transferred to the interneuron which is actually a communication between the sensory and the motor neuron so it is acting like a middleman so the sensory neuron that is going to send message to the interneuron the interneuron is going to send message to the motor neuron and hence a cellular response that will be generated so in between the sensory and the motor neuron you can expect a lot of the uh, interneurons that doesn't mean that there is a single interneuron present between the sensory and the motor neuron a lot of them they can be actually present between the sensory and the uh, motor neuron so these are the three primary type of the uh, neuron the sensory neuron, sensory neuron receiving the message the interneuron acting as a bridge between the sensory and the motor neuron and the motor neuron they will be actually responsible for generating a cellular response if I give you a simple example of this, for example, uh, if uh, this message is for the contraction of the muscles, so in the end, the motor neuron that will be directing the muscle for the contraction. If this signal is for the relaxation of the muscle, the motor neuron is going to direct the cell, uh, direct the muscles for the uh, relaxation. Now, when you talk about the uh, nervous system, the uh, uh, whole nervous system is divided into the central nervous system and the uh, peripheral nervous system. When you talk about the central nervous system, uh, it contains three main components the brain, uh, including your cerebrum and the cerebellum, and the brain stem, like your medulla, and the spinal cord. They, that is actually making the uh, central nervous system. Now, and you talk about the function of the central nervous system, the central nervous system that receive information from all parts of the body and coordinate a certain response. So this is the function of the central nervous system. When you talk about the peripheral nervous system, all the neurons and ganglia outside the brain and the spinal cord that will be called is the uh, peripheral nervous system so all of your nerves all of your ganglia which are outside the brain and the spinal cord that is going to constitute the uh, uh, peripheral nervous system so you can see over here the brain and spinal cord the central one all of the other ganglion and the uh, neurons they are going to make the uh, peripheral nervous system now this peripheral nervous system is further divided into two subclasses. One is known as the somatic nervous system. Uh, this somatic nervous system that is associated with voluntary control of the movement via the skeletal muscles. Uh, when you want to uh, contract or uh, relax your muscle voluntarily, uh, you are actually using your somatic nervous system. So the somatic nervous system, that is actually the voluntary control of the movement by the skeletal muscles. Now this voluntary control is actually done by uh, two uh, type two neurons. One is known as the afferent nerves, which is actually the sensory neuron. And the other one is the afferent nerves. Uh, you can see the difference be, uh, of the A and E between these two nerves. So this one, the one starting with A, is actually the sensory neuron, uh, which would be taking message towards the uh, central nervous system. And this uh, E, that will be uh, actually the motor neuron, which would be uh, controlling the uh, voluntary, controlling the relaxation and contraction of the muscles. Now, the autonomic nervous system that is actually associated with uh, uh, involuntary control of different functions. Now, when you talk about this uh, autonomic nervous system, this is further divided into uh, two classes. What in the one is known as the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, 
Uh, keep in mind one thing again this autonomic nervous system it will be controlling the uh, it is responsible for the uh, involuntary control you cannot uh, uh, you can say uh, control the things of the autonomic nervous system voluntarily this will be uh, involuntary control so this autonomic nervous system is again divided into the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system now this sympathetic nervous system that actually responds to emergencies like the fight and the flight response i have a detailed video how the fight and the flight response works and i'll share the uh, link in the description but in the fight and the flight response there is an increased muscle blood flow there is uh, the breakdown of the glycogen there is a uh, pupil dilation uh, to fight the uh, emergency the uh, other type of the autonomic nervous system which is the parasympathetic nervous system that uh, that is actually controlling the digestion the blood pressure and the heart rate when you talk about the digestion you are not controlling it uh, the blood pressure you are not controlling it it is actually a uh, involuntary control by the uh, autonomic or specifically by the uh, parasympathetic nervous system now one important term that is used uh, that is known as the nervous tissue so what this nervous tissue means uh, the nerve the neurons plus the glia that is actually the nervous tissue and as i've told you the function of the neuron is to receive transfer and conduct electrical signals and the glia that is actually providing uh, support for the uh, neuron so uh, in the in next video we'll be talking about uh, in detail uh, how the uh, message that is transferred from the uh, uh, presynaptic neuron into the postsynaptic neuron how the uh, membrane polarity that is controlled we'll be talking about the concept of the uh, polarization and the depolarization so if you like this video uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel hit the like button and share it with your friends